series round started. We welcome inside the Hall of Famer John Smoltz. I'm Joe Davis. A pair of six year postseason droughts end in this one. You've got a couple teams that took different paths to this same destination. The Orioles of course the long the painful rebuild where they hit on the draft. They hit on some short free agents. Now long term free agents big price spending for the Texas Rangers and they hire a legendary manager. These two teams two years removed John from losing more than 100 games are back in the postseason. First of all the energy in this <laughs> place is unbelievable and the energy in Texas is all about their offense. They were supposed to have and come here with some starters but it's their offense that carries them and the young Baltimore Orioles even though they don't have experience they can beat you in so many ways. This is going to be a great series. Well what got Orioles fans through those low years was the promise of what you're seeing those young guys that were coming they have arrived and they have delivered pretty amazing when you think about Adley Rutschman and the numbers they have with him versus without him and then of course Gunnar Henderson the new apparent to Cal Ripken playing shortstop tall guy. I love the grit and the quiet confidence who could have predicted they would have the best record in baseball nobody incredible tell me about these Texas Rangers you said it they mash don't they they do mash and it starts with the top of their lineup but here's what it is they're going to slug you to death they're going to swing early but they're going to be patient get on base they do everything you could ask for for an offense the only question mark is they disappear from time to time that's been a streaky year but really the three guys that make this offense go is the big three and they do it about as well as anybody they're going to swing early they're going to get hits early and if, if Texas wins this series it's going to be because their offense continues to do the damage. Those are three of the five starters that Texas had in the lineup in the All Star game and they're going to have them in there again today. Game one of the division series the Texas Rangers the young Baltimore Orioles those young guns getting their first shot in the postseason spotlight. We've got first pitch of the division series the first of the division series games lined up on this Saturday coming up on FS1. home for their first 38 years in Baltimore some great memories in that ballpark for Orioles fans all three World Series that they won came or they were calling that place home and then they moved to Camden Yards in 1992 hosted some postseason baseball but today hosts playoff baseball for the first time in nine years. But they finished up their time in Memorial Stadium with a couple legends a couple Baltimore legends Johnny Yu and Brooks Robinson who we lost last week ceremony of first pitches and our first touchdown passes I guess from those guys in the last game at Memorial Stadium first postseason game here at Camden Yards in a long time and it is Orioles legend Adam Jones throwing out the ceremonial first pitch before the real first pitch of this division series we go to the field here's Ken Rosenthal Joe this is the city of Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray of Earl Weaver and Jim Palmer of Frank Robinson and of course Brooks this is also a city that has not seen postseason baseball since 2016. The excitement here is palpable. And it's palpable not only because the Orioles are coming off a surprising 100 win season, but because of the next generation. Gunnar Henderson and Adley Rushman, Grayson Rodriguez, and today's starter, Kyle Bradish. These are the heirs to a proud legacy. And a new chapter starts today. And Kenny it's kind of a fitting metaphor with the sun coming out today in a city that's had so many dark baseball days the last few years sun shining again on this great baseball city and the first of the division series games today all four division series going to get rocking twins and Astros will be later on FS1. Time to see the lineup sponsored by IBM. We give you the Texas Rangers top run scoring team in the American League with their high priced free agents at the top of it in Simeon and Seeger. Robbie Grossman bats third. Then it's Adolis Garcia out of the cleanup spot. Evan Carter, 21 year old phenom, carried him in the wild card round, followed by a catcher in Jonah Hyde. Low, Young, and Tavares to finish things up. Yeah, the Orioles failed to bring in an ace in the offseason and then again at the deadline. It turns out, John, they had one developing right in front of them. Kyle Bradish, a 2.83 ERA. Yeah, he's been unbelievable in the second half. Look for the emotion adrenaline. If it doesn't impact his fastball, he's going to be fine. Also, look, early action. First two hitters love to swing, set the tone. He's got an unbelievable slider and an unbelievable curveball. 
but he is in for the first two hitters. It could be three pitches, and we're already facing the third hitter. So see what happens, how he handles this incredible electricity. 27 years old at Peoria, Arizona, as Marcus Simeon stands in. These Rangers two years removed from losing 102 games. The Orioles two years removed from losing 110 games. Both in the postseason for the first time in seven years. And off we go with a first pitch swing and a pop fly foul. And that's going to be the theme at the top of the order. Make good pitches, you get quick outs. If, if you don't, you've got traffic on the bases. The key to postseason when you haven't been there is how do you keep your crowd when they're up to a dull roar and then when you're at the plate, pandemonium, because that means good things are happening. Bradish comes home with an 0 1. Simeon takes a high score. And you'll see in our on screen strike zone, it'll register as red when it's in the zone, which that one was. Bradish back home with an 0 2 and a breaking ball. Starts his day with a strikeout. One of his two filthy, hard breaking breakers. Well, great sign early. Fastball, you know, is going to be pumped up. It's 96 97, but this secondary pitch is a wipeout pitch. It comes off the height of his fastball. He has a curveball that breaks in a power form. He can throw his sinker every once in a while. Cutting fastball, good start. Watch out first pitch against Seeger. Yeah, this guy swings at it more than anybody in baseball. And does here. Lashing it to left center field. Hayes is back to get it. Two up and two down in this first inning for Kyle Bradish. Amazing Seeger can have the numbers. We'll talk about it because we've got to talk about it quick because he's not going to take many pitches. He has incredible numbers despite being able to swing at that first pitch all the time. And because of what those guys do, John, Simeon and Seeger, that's a big part of the reason why you're going to see this next guy hitting third. It's like Robbie Grossman hitting third. What in the world? But you know he's probably going to see some pitch. It starts to get more patient from this point down, especially with Grossman. Grossman and the Rangers rolled right through Tampa Bay in the wild card round. Starting their first postseason trip since 2016 with a sweep of the Rays. And now up here to Baltimore. One ball, one strike on Grossman. Top run scoring lineup in the American League. They led the league in home runs. They led the league in on base percentage. When they're at their best, they will grind you down. 1-1 from Braddish. Outside ball two. Well, as part of his discipline is he won't swing at that pitch. Any breaking ball away, he won't swing. And a fastball up, he won't. Late, though, with two strikes, you can beat him with fastball. So he will be very disciplined, and he slows the game down after the first two guys speed it up. 34-year-old Juryman takes strike two. He's with his 16 and 11 years as Robbie Grossman. We haven't seen the power breaking ball curveball yet. We could see it right here after he backdoored a slider and see if he pulls the string on this curveball. And he went up. The hard stuff to run the count four. But away and up, Grossman won't swing. More over the middle of the plate and in, he will. And the Texas Rangers lead all of baseball in three ball counts. This is the first one of the many that they should get during this game in this series if they're on their offensive game. It really is an amazing combination of power, aggressive hitters, but also guys that will grind out counts like this. On a 3-2, Grossman fouls it off. We've got a very pitcher-friendly home plate umpire today in Lance Barrett. This crew with the crew chief, Alfonso Marquez, at second. Kyle Bradish, who has emerged as one of the top pitchers in the AL, looking for a 1 2 3 first inning. Another payoff pitch. Down the line. That's a fair ball. Extra bases for Robbie Grossman, giving Texas its first base runner of the day. Two out double for Grossman here in the first. That's what he'll do, and his patience paid off. He kept going to that hard slider, and that hard slider comes in on a 3 2 pitch and stays over the middle of the plate and he pulls it down the line. The Texas Rangers have one of the most well we'll get into how streaky they've been but offensively they slug early swing early then patient late and it's a great combination to get on base and cause problems for the opposing pitcher. 
And it gives a chance to one of the most productive hitters in the league this year, Nadolis Garcia. And this is what he does. I mean, he, he'll hit it far, he'll hit it hard, but he'll also go after it out there. Well, he's trying to do one thing and one thing only, get the ball in the air, and he can hit it a long ways when he does. Second in the league behind Otani with those 39 home runs. Hit another one on Wednesday in Tampa. Fouls this one off, and it's quickly 0-2. Again, slider, you can tell he's amped up. 90 mile an hour slider. When does he start breaking in the curveball that gives a little bit more top to bottom break? Changes the eye level of the hitters, these aggressive hitters for the Rangers. Brandon Steele outside with a fastball. One of the reasons Kyle Bradish has had this amazing season is he was the best pitcher in baseball with runners in scoring position and two outs. He gave up five hits all year in these situations. His one two to Garcia is coming on a miss. That's the inning. Lineup sponsored by IBM. Austin Hayes is going to lead things off, something that he started to do a little more as the season went on. Adley Rutschman bats second, followed by Anthony Santander. Ryan Mountcastle bats cleanup. Then it's Gunnar Henderson and Aaron Hicks. Westberg, Mullins, and Urias. And on the mound for the Rangers, he knew it was going to be Montgomery in game two and Evaldi in game three. Question was who was going to get game one? It'll be Andrew Heaney. Yeah, a little bit different than his counterpart on the mound. He's going to sling it from a different angle. He's going to rely on high fastballs, inside fastballs, changeups, and sliders. And the unknown factor here for Baltimore is that week off. Here we go. Action. Austin Hayes swats the first one that he sees. Demarcus Simeon, one pitch, one out. So, I mean, it's last year, John, you had the Dodgers and the Braves both win more than 100 games. Try to deal with that week off and then struggle and get bounced. And so teams are trying to figure out what the right way to handle that week is. No doubt. And nobody knows how until a couple of years go into it. They're going to make adjustments. Baseball's played in 162 games with few off days. Yes, a lot of these players for the Orioles, they were banged up at the end. Their offense struggled. So they needed some time off. But it's hard to replicate stressful situations in inner squad games that's what they did they put everything in normal fashion as if they were going to the park to play an everyday game even opened the place up for fans to come in they had 5,000 people show up and had a great time and like you said this offense collectively was struggling down the stretch so maybe the week off came at a good time for this Orioles club. Now the one guy who didn't need the break was Adley Rutschman. He was the one guy who was on a tear to finish off the regular season. On an 0-2 pitch here. Pulls one left side. Corey Seager. Two up and two down. Yeah, so time is going to tell for a lot of these teams. Last year, both the Dodgers and the Braves got bounced early. They had the time off. Only Houston was able to run the table. And I think this year, all eyes are going to be on these number one and number two seats because Texas came in and they played two games had two days off. Nobody played a three game series. Everybody swept. So there really is nothing lost for those teams coming in other than travel. But John we talk about the young studs for the Orioles stealing the spotlight. But how about guys like Anthony Santander who have lived this entire rebuild. It's the longest tenured Oriole right here. You, you feel good for a guy like him and Cedric Mullins. And I know we'll get into it later, but how about their manager sticking around and being able to get the fruits of the labor? And that is so un so rare in our game. And the team gets good, and they usually go in a different direction. So I'm glad for them and this whole organization. It's it's not an easy formula, by the way. Like everyone says, oh, build your stockpile, get your draft picks. You got to lose and lose bad for a long time. And the Orioles. A lot of orange and a lot of hats and a lot of apparel coming back out. <laughs> you weren't seeing much of that a few years ago. Santander on 2 1. Grounds one up the middle. Into center field base here. Anthony Santander, the guy that's been here the longest, has their first hit in the return to the postseason. And here's the difference in the postseason if you're sitting at home going, what's the big deal about? See the crowd? 
on a two out hit in the regular season they would give a softer clap it wouldn't be raucous and now that's a rally the crowd knows the importance of the postseason the players have to learn how to deal with it and feel that emotion so much different than a regular season game. Andrew Heaney, who's on the mound trying to deal with that noise, has pitched in one game in his career in the postseason. Just three innings in relief last year as he misses inside ball one on Ryan Mountcastle. How are you doing it when you're the road pitcher in this environment? The best way to explain it is it needs to be a dull roar because there's always going to be a roar. A dull roar means there's not many rallies and not many runs going on the board. Oh! Got the call there. Because conversely, when there is men on base, there is going to be a ton of crowd noise as we look at this pitch. The key is going to be if he gets the inside part of the plate today, that will bode well for the Rangers and Andrew Heaney. His 1 1 swung on and missed. 1 and 2 on Mountcastle. Because what that allows him to do, he throws that crossfire fastball in and up. Now he can mess with the change up away and then he can back foot his slider. He's sneaky and kind of unorthodox. The left handers one two pitch is inside and the count evens up on Mountcastle. Mountcastle absolutely loves facing left handers on the year. His splits are pretty big. Yeah one of the best in baseball against lefties and he has homered against Heaney twice. On this 2 2, he shoots it foul. Now, the one big difference between the two teams to watch for in this series, the Rangers are virtually not going to run. I think last in baseball, the Orioles have that capability to run, but the guy behind the plate has a pretty good percentage of throwing out runners in high. Yeah, here's uh, another 2 2 and another foul ball. How will stolen bases look in the postseason? Because with the new rules this year, opening up the running game, highest stolen base success rate ever. Will teams push the envelope with that now that the calendar turns to October? Runner at first, two gone in this scoreless first inning. Another 2 2 from Andrew Heaney. Ryan Mountcastle takes ball three, count goes full. Runner will get a head start. There goes Santander, 3-2, fouled off. Mountcastle's one of those guys who may benefit from the week off. He had the shoulder injury late during the regular season, came back for the last few days. But a few days to get that shoulder rested. And when he's been healthy, he's been as good as anybody. In fact, second half of the season, he hit 322 that placed him third in the AL. Yeah, his only weakness really against left-handers is that changeup. We saw the one miss, 2-2. Will he go back to it 3 2? On the ninth pitch, Mountcastle pulls it to third. Josh Young's got it. Texas very steady defensively this year. And they finish off the scoreless first inning for Andrew Heaney. Onto the second inning, Kyle Bradish goes back to work. Five, six, and seven coming up for the Rangers, and it is their 21-year-old rookie Evan Carter, who's been in the big leagues for less than a month, but has stolen the show in that time. And he came up at a time where the Rangers really needed somebody to inject some life, and he did, and then carried him against Tampa Bay on base seven times in eight plate appearances for a guy that just turned 21 and just got to the major leagues. When I see certain notes, I have to double check, triple check, because it doesn't seem right. Only 9% chase. You know how rare that is for a young player to have it and if somebody talked to him about it and he said it's not something I practice I think it just comes natural. So that means pitches outside the strike zone he's only chasing especially in the last 14 days only 9% chase in the last 14 days. And this is what the Rangers loved about him when they drafted him out of a small high school in Tennessee you know wasn't facing great competition but they were just blown away by his plate discipline. And saw it as he blazed through the minor leagues, where his nickname was Full Count. 
<laughs> Worked it so many times and has done so much oh. since getting to the major leagues. And Bruce Bochy talking to him thinks the power will come. He's only 21 as we mentioned and he thinks over time his power numbers are going to go up and there's definitely going to be an improvement which is already the sky is the ceiling is pretty high. Takes outside and takes ball four to lead off this inning. There's some of that patience of Evan Carter and he's got a walk to lead off the second. That brings up Jonah Heim. All star catcher for the Rangers. Strike one from Radish and for more on the Orioles righty we go down to Kenny. Well Joe teams often use analytics to suggest tweaks in pitchers repertoires but Radish took it upon himself last season to learn his sinker after talking with teammate Dean Kramer who also was eager to add the pitch. Both starters wanted something to keep the right handed hitters honest and in Bradish's case the pitch's movement helped his slider play up even more. That pitch to Garcia to strike out at the end of the first inning 97 mile an hour sinker. Yeah, everything playing up so far today. Yeah. See what he goes with on this one one to Heim. It is a curve the check swing foul. Yeah the curveball gives Heim some problems and now if he can throw that breaking ball in the middle of the zone and end up down he'll get a swing and a miss. Heim's pretty good at not chasing a fastball down everything up he'll chase and a switch hitting catcher what a luxury for the Rangers who's elite defensively has been for a while has added the offense to it this year. There's that high fastball a strike out one away. Well this fastball cuts and when he goes to the four seamer you get that rotation that's different for the hitter and tough to pick up. I mentioned the oddities of this Rangers team 95 and above not so great with fastballs but they're a great breaking ball hitting team. But you know what Bradish's breaking ball is not normal. Ball one on Nathaniel Lowe. So when you're a pitcher in the postseason you're looking at that you're looking at the guy's weaknesses but then you're looking at your own season that you've had in your yeah. own stuff. What were you leaning. Well you got to know that his breaking ball and you say my breaking ball is like like the average breaking ball so you can't take that number in totality and, and go away from throwing your breaking ball against a really really good breaking ball hitting team. And so you you get all the numbers you look at the video and you see which guys you must stay away from one thing but for the most part you impart your way and your will and throwing strikes early is a key especially with the fastball. One oh to Nathaniel Lowe shot foul. Well Lowe's the guy who feels like a key for them as we talk about how boom or bust they've been he's been their three hitter for most of the year job but he had 160 in September and now he's hitting seven. Yeah he's definitely getting beat up lately with fastballs you're seeing team pound fastballs the bat is slow through the zone the trigger and mechanics is just a little bit off but if he gets reconnected power. Oh one and two as you see on the camera right on top of Lance Barrett's helmet his mask. And that's where they go. I mean, he could put on a show in BP, Ken Lowe, but his ability to get that quick hand in the bat is just slow enough that he you do him a favor if you if you hang a breaking ball in the zone. The one two comes home. He got him stuck with a fastball. And he's got his fourth K already. That's why in this game, Joe. The information's vital, but if you're in a two week funk that's not living up to your information, you got to go with what's recent. And right now, he's not catching up to the fastball. He has to make you adjust, meaning he will be the determining factor of whether you change and stop throwing in fastballs. If it ain't broke, or if it is broke, keep on exposing it. Here's strike one on Josh Young. What's recent with Josh Young is that he had a three hit game on Wednesday at a much needed time because this guy injured his thumb in August came back about a month later didn't look right but then he goes against Tampa Bay on Wednesday and gets three extra base hits. All star as a rookie inside corner 0 and 2. Almost a 30 percent strikeout rate you know he's going to get better and cut those down. But right now he's got a facing electric stuff 
on a guy that feels like he can throw any pitch at any time. Oh, two. Strikes out the side. Three straight strikeouts right there. And Gunnar Henderson gets ready to lead off for Baltimore. Likely rookie of the year right here, Gunnar Henderson. Got to be ex on the first pitch, ready to go. He's struggled oh. against left-handed pitching this year, and I would think early in this count. Don't know how many times he's going to face Heaney, but try to get out in front before Heaney gets two strikes on him. Left-hander against left-hander. It is one ball, one strike. And John, I know people say, look, this Orioles team is good. They don't really have any stars. Well, the baseball world's about to find out about a few of them, including this guy here, just 22 years old. Started the season as the top prospect in baseball. He's going to end it as the AL Rookie of the Year. Yeah, and he didn't start off on fire. He struggled early. He's battled his way to this position. Just broke Cal Ripken's extra base hit record for a rookie. And look, six foot three. There's some similarities, but this guy's. Jersey will always be dirty. That's a compliment because he's always doing something to impact the game. On this 3 1, Henderson fouls it off, and the count is full. The cow was drafted in the second round, Aberdeen High School, 1978. Four years after that, he was the rookie of the year. Gunner was drafted in the second round in 2019 at a high school in Selma, Alabama. Four years after that, probably rookie of the year. On this 3 2, Henderson golfs one down the line, but foul. One of the ways the Orioles have made it back, the primary way the Orioles have made it back has been by nailing the draft. How about their first two picks in 2019? First two picks after Mike Elias took over Rutschman and Henderson. Henderson down on a high fastball. So one gone in the second inning, and they haven't stopped there. Kerstad came up late. Jordan Westberg, who's going to bat in this inning, has been overshadowed by the other guys, but he's had a good rookie season. And the top prospect in baseball currently is still waiting to come up in Jackson Holiday. It's really a good place and a good time to be an Oriole after it's been a long, long journey to get here. A lot of losses, a lot of kind of embarrassing when you think about how many hundred plus losses but then they knew this was coming and hoping that one day they get to see this they added a twerk tweak a little bit here and there they didn't do much at the all star or at the trading deadline but they had enough and they're just doing the things they have to do to now have three four five years of this 2-0 to Aaron Hicks is popped up on the right side of the infield that sun is bright at this point is there to catch it and two gone in the second inning we take a look at today's same game parlay sponsored by FanDuel with Adolis Garcia and Gunnar Henderson you know in this path back for the Orioles we talk about the young guys we've talked about the veterans that have stayed there through the whole thing Hicks just made that pop out there that's the other part of this equation the cast offs from other teams that they've taken and have had rediscover their form here in Baltimore strike on Jordan oh. Westberg. Yeah, I, again, uh, coaching staff stayed intact. They've added a, a couple, but I think for what they've done here now, it, again, I can't go over how many people could never have predicted this this year. If you'd have said in the beginning of the season, but spring training, the Baltimore Orioles are going to win the division, you'd go, ah, I don't yeah. see that. Maybe make the playoffs, but have the best record? That tip of the cap. Westberg gets one hard in the air to center field. Tavares drifting back into the gap. He's there with Garcia. They come together, and it's Garcia to stab it in front of the center fielder. He says, I'm the captain now.
Top three, no score. Game one between the Rangers and the Orioles as Kyle Bradish goes back to work against Leody Tavares. Nine, one and two in the Rangers order. There's ball one. This is such a good offense when you put it all together, but incredibly streaky. So what version shows up today? What version shows up in this postseason for Texas? When they're right, they're capable of overriding every other factor in the series. When they're not, you saw what happened. They went two and four over the last week of the regular season, and it cost them the division as that offense completely disappeared. Yeah, especially that last game. You think about that last game. They win it. They go home. They rest. They lose it. They fly six hours to see to Tampa. They lost that game one to nothing. Really didn't score at all in that series. So you're right about that. The offense is hard to figure it out. We talked to Bruce Bochy. He says I don't understand it, but when they're good, they're great. And it's it's led to just this incredible streakiness over the last two months. Oh. You know, in August they had an eight game winning streak immediately followed by an eight game losing streak. September they went in succession lose four win six lose four win six. Tavares leading off this third slicing the line drive to center field Mullins is there. And Bruce Bochy has been around for a long time. He says he has never seen anything like this when it comes to streaking. No, and the bottom of the order is partly to contribute because the reason that Simeon has so many RBIs, the bottom of the lineup for Texas has been so good for so long. They get on base, and this guy uh, feasts with the RBI, of course, with Seeger behind him. So there they go as the three that we talked about in the open go. When they're on, man, they are doing damage. Back to the top and Simeon who ducks out of the way of ball one led the American League in hits led the American League in runs scored and he let off all 162 games for Texas. And his second year with the Rangers that long term contract. Oh. One ball one strike. All over the leaderboards. It was a franchise altering 24 hours before that 22 season when they got him and Seeger that same day. Both those guys have delivered. Got to get him to chase your slider. And, and Bradish knows that. He's been trying to get ahead with that fastball. A little bit uh, wild this inning with his fastball. That's the pitch. Oh. He gets thrown to that for strikes, and he's getting a lot of swing and misses out of that pitch. That's the tight slider, and he's got the breaking ball to come off of it, the curveball. But you see, it looks like a fastball coming out of his hand, and then that slight break. Home of the 2 2. A fastball fouled off. That thing moves like crazy. Well, 94. that two seamer, the two seamer he's worked and added to his repertoire has been a huge thing that he wanted to keep right handers honest so that they didn't just ably lean out over the plate and go get the breaking balls off the plate. So now he can go off the plate with a breaking ball right here. On 2 2. It is grounded to short for Gunnar Henderson. Two up, two down. Because he had four pitches prior to adding that sinker, but everything moved right to left. And yeah, those right handed hitters way too comfy leaning out over there. And look at how things have changed. And that really happened when he went down to the minors midway through last year. He had a seven ERA at that point through 10 starts in the major leagues. Since coming back with that pitch added to the repertoire, he's second in the AL in ERA. His first one to Corey Seeger is outside. Well you hear all the time he's got two lanes to go to if you only have one lane that puts the hitter in an advantage and can eliminate some stuff but if he has two ways to get you out arm side and glove side and, and the action goes opposite way boy hitters don't like that at all. Ball and a strike and this hitter right here he doesn't mind facing anything and he doesn't mind swinging because he's so strong and trusts his ability to hit for average and power for a shortstop this big is rare. Rare, rare. On this 1 1 pitch, Seeger takes a curve inside. And if it's not for Shohei Otani, this might be your AL MVP. Yeah, when he stays healthy, holy cow, can he get it done? And those numbers are not bad right there when you think about Shohei in the same league. 
but they went out and spent a ton of money on Corey Seager. And they're getting dividend. Bouncing ball on that sinker. The second base for Jordan Westberg. And that's a 1 2 3 third inning for Kyle Bradish. Postseason baseball back in this great city of Baltimore. And off and rolling. No score. Middle three. Eight, nine, and one coming up for the Orioles in this scoreless third inning. Cedric Mullins leads off and takes ball one from Andrew Heaney. That's where he's good and disciplined. Won't chase away. When he's right, he's Mr. Excitement. He hasn't been right for some time, battling some injuries in a really tough spot mechanically right now. And they're hoping that week really benefited him because if he does something for this club, because he's so talented, if he gets going again, Wow, what a jolt that gives their offense. Slowed all season by a groin injury, multiple IL stints because of that. But this is one of the bright spots during the dark days. 2021, the Orioles lose 110 games. Cedric Mullins, in the middle of that, was putting together the first 30 home run, 30 stolen base season in franchise history. Yeah, he's been he's been everything here, and now they're getting the benefit from all the pieces together to put him in a winning situation. On this one two Mullins takes outside and it's two and two. Well I said there'd be two different ways of getting it done. You see power and strikeouts from Bradish. You just see him funkiness and weak contact out of Heaney and that's the way he pitches. Signed a two year contract with the Rangers this offseason after he had a career year with the Dodgers last year. Moved into the bullpen at the start of September, did he? And he started game 161 in Seattle, was really good in that game, four and a third scoreless innings, and actually has pitched pretty well the last few weeks. Still was a bit of a surprise that he was the game three starter, not Dane Dunning, who a lot of people thought was going to take it. Out of the payoff, and a pop foul. Well, the two unsung heroes on this team could be the two pitchers we see pitch today, and that's Dunning. And Heaney because of the injuries and the players they went to get these guys have relatively been their guy to pitch where needed on the bullpen and making starts another payoff got in on him and shallow center field an easy one for Corey Seager and the starting rotation was supposed to be why the Rangers were going to contend again they go out and they get Jacob the Grom the trade for Scherzer at the deadline he pitched well but hasn't pitched in a month because of the arm issue John Gray's on the injured list just about everybody they had in the season opening rotation either moved to the bullpen or has been hurt since. One gone in the third Ramon Urias takes oh. a strike. Yeah when you think about the Rangers it's really been the pitching that they haven't had that's led them to not being in the postseason then they went and got the pitching and they couldn't stay healthy to your point. Chopper. Young. Two out. Now on the other side the Orioles they've been steady all season Tampa Bay raced out of the gates and had that huge lead and so the Orioles just had to keep on coming but there were six and a half back July 1st the young guys that have been promised for so long have shown up and done their thing starting rotation better in the second half Grayson Rodriguez at the heart of that and the first 100 win season since 1980 is Austin Hayes takes a strike. Well we talked about they don't have many experienced players in the postseason. They've been playing postseason baseball for the last 10 to 14 days of the season trying to lock up the division and the best record. Hayes hooks one down the line but foul. And I think that kind of play even though they struggled down the stretch they went two to one one to nothing two to one that gave them especially that series against the Rays when they were lost the first two and it looked like uh oh they're going to relinquish the division rallied back and won the next two their manager said that did it for me that that was a big moment chopper to third again young is there that's a one two three inning for Andrew Heaney who's retired seven straight. <laughs>
both these pitchers so far John harnessing harnessing the uh, Motion of the postseason yeah. environment pitching really well. Well, the guy that's making the most impact, at least from a, an effective standpoint, even though outs are outs, he has powered his way through this lineup the first time through as Bradish. It's the only guy that's gotten a hit against him. Robbie Grossman fouls off the first pitch. Grossman doubled in the first inning. Evan Carter walked to start the second. Six in a row retired by Bradish since. You just saw the bigger breaking ball right there, the change of speed. Everything was heightened and the velocity was way up early. Oh! As least amount of stress in the postseason, a starting pitcher will enjoy this a lot more than if he's constantly battling with runners <laughs> on base. Here comes with an 0-2. It's a breaking ball in the dirt, one and two. I felt like the keys to success in the postseason if you simplify it and just realize pitch every batter like your last you can't do that in the regular season so get the first hitter out that's priority number one I mean that's stating the obvious but the reason I say that is the next guy gets on you're one pitch away from a double play that's what you tell yourself and if you can get cleaner innings I'm talking to Brandon Hyde he said look I, if my guys out there and he can go eight or nine I'm letting him go eight or nine because it's telling me he's dominating the game. Now that won't be the case for Bruce Bochy he'll have to be more strategy and use more guys more than likely. Two two to Grossman oh. inside corner to get him and the six strikeout for Kyle Bradish. Well you talked about the pitching staff and why they're better and how much improvement they've made part of that as we watch this pitch just bear in that two seamer. Mm. part of it is the unbelievable new wall they have in left field and why do I say that because they pitch to that wall at 384 now instead of where it was that gives them room for making mistakes and right handers have to hit it a long way to the pull side Adolis Garcia fouls it off and by doing that now that's how you lower your team ERA that's how you get confidence and on the flip side by the way Baltimore's built left hand heavy and the short ports where is it in right mm -hmm. field so they have tailored their park to their organizational philosophy and it's shocking when you came in here and saw it for the first time because this was the most one of the most friendly hitting home run parks in all of baseball and that's including Coors Field. Yeah it had led the majors in home runs five of the previous nine years in the front office said we got to shed that reputation we got to get that out of the heads of our pitchers and prospective pitchers when you're looking at free agency that's a shot down the line into the left field corner for Adolis Garcia on his way to second with a double. But to finish that thought that is brilliant. That's how you keep young pitchers good. That's how you acquire pitching if you want to. Who's going to come here as a free agent if the ballpark is just loaded with balls in the air and home runs all over the place. This is a great swing down the line. He beats the barrel of the bat to the fastball. That's what you talked about them doing against the Rays. That's the thought process they had coming in here against Bradish. Beat the fastball with the barrel of the bat. If they can do that they're going to have success. And look who finds himself in the middle of this opportunity here. It is Evan Carter. He hooks one down the line. That's a base hit for Carter. And the 21 year old's in the middle of it again. On his way to second with a double. Garcia's in to score. And the Rangers are on the board first. Evan Carter, who just turned 21 a little more than a month ago, had to tear through the wild card round, and he's got an RBI double here. It's amazing. He walked, then homered, walked, then doubled, I guess, in the Rays series. He walks and picks on the first pitch for a double. He is way above his years of, uh, <laughs> can we say, yeah. youth of 21, and he's playing the game at a different level right now. I mean, you watch him play, and you look at the numbers that he's put up so far, and you got to do a double take at the age and the experience. Strike one and a high fastball to Jonah Hyde. Evan Carter only got his chance in the big leagues and not that he wasn't tearing it up but because Adolis Garcia got hurt. And so they call on Carter who had spent eight games in triple A. He was in a ball last year. All of this year in double A prior to that week before the call up. And now it's time with a base hit to left center. 
Carter's given the wave. Mullins' throw goes into second, and it's two to nothing, Texas. Three consecutive hits here in the fourth. Well, the Rangers, in just a little over 50%, scored first, which was fifth bat best. They did it in 56% rate where they scored first. And what you try to prevent when you're facing the Rangers, you try to prevent the three ball count and the three run or more inning. The, we call it the crooked inning because they can put up three runs or more in just about as good as anybody. 113 times or somewhere in that number they did that and scored three runs or more in any given inning. 113 give or take. It's a lot it's anyway a lot. you slice it, huh? Yeah, they were hoping that them coming to life in St. Pete this week was the sign of another good streak coming. It's when they get going. Look out. One ball, one strike on Nathaniel Lowe. We talked about them being a really good breaking ball hitting team. Early on, they weren't hitting the breaking ball. They were swinging a miss. In this inning, they've made contact with it. They got the double that scored the first run and got a single again off of that. Bradish is 1 1. Low swing, Stewart 1 and 2. Yeah, they did it 113 times. I you were my right. Notes. Give or take. <laughs> I got a little nervous when I threw it out there. I didn't know if I should just stick with it. Go with it. Trust it, baby. Fourth consecutive hit for Texas as low chops one through the right side. Now they had one hit over the first three innings. They've got four in a row here in the fourth. And it can come at you fast against this Rangers offense. Well, another breaking ball. And uh, they're definitely getting to see it the second time around. Here's the curveball, and he is able to stay on top, get the top half of that ball to hit it on the ground in between the hole. And wondered what we were going to see. I thought we'd see a lot more fastballs that we talked about early because Lowe was getting beat up with fastballs, but he got a breaking ball and took advantage of it. Well, the postseason is going to continue next game one of the other division series in the AL. The Twins finally win in a postseason series, taking on the defending champion Astros right here on FS1. And then the NLDS gets started with a pair of game ones, Phillies and Braves, then D-backs and Dodgers over on TBS. Minnesota gave up just one run in two games against Toronto, got its first win in the postseason since 2004. Already action in the Orioles bullpen. Well, now you have the nervous crowd. We talked about what you want to be on when you're on the, on, on the mountain. You want the crazy crowd. That means you're doing your thing. Now it's nervous because they got two runs on the board. Josh Young, two on, one out. Young sends a fly ball to right field for Hicks. Good mound visit. One pitch later, two out. This Oriole team has played so many close games and they grind out the game after game at bat after bat. So you keep it close. You think your offense is definitely going to come back with what Bruce Bochy's dealing with and his bullpen timing might be the best thing he's got going because as the year went on his bullpen really wasn't great. No. But he needs to condense it in a short series and only needs a couple guys to be great. Leody Tavares hit it hard his first oh. time, but he's caught in center. It takes a strike. And for the most part, John, they've been able to avoid that bullpen getting too exposed because they score so many runs, and they get blowout wins. They don't need their bullpen. But I think they were the second most facing position players during the year, pitching, meaning position players that pitched. Here you go again, going out on a limb with one of those stats. And oh, I think you're right. They're I second they most. Again. They definitely are second most. And, and Bruce even said, look, we padded a lot of our offensive stats against position players. That's how much we beat up the other team. And then, of course, you get the position players to come in and finish the game. Two on, two out. And the nine hitter Tavares on this 1 1 pitch shoots a base hit the other way. Runners given the wave. Hayes has a good arm. Late stop sign, and for good reason, as Hayes shows off that cannon. And they go station to station. Bases loaded. 
Well with two outs you think it you get the break you're always going to score that run from second but they didn't. And you see the runner got a good break but there was a charging haze and to play left field in this ballpark you've got to be a center fielder. You got to have center fielder capabilities and they love Hayes in left field. Bases loaded top of the order Marcus Simeon big spot in this game Simeon swings and misses at a sharp slider. Oh for two today. Seven grand slams in his career. On an 0 1 Simeon takes high. Count even one ball, one strike. Prolific as any leadoff man in baseball, really ever knocking in runs. More than 100 this year. Just a little bit up on that two seam fastball. Golden chance for the Rangers. Simeon fouls it, and it's one and two. If you're Braddish, you got a chance here, John, after it looked like it could really spiral out of control. To get things in line. Yeah, he's got to go to a really, really good slider if he wants a way on the plate. Simeon, that's one of his weak spots, is the outside. And you could see how he was trying to protect against a breaking ball and fought off the fastball. The fastball beat him. That's the confusing part. Because if you're out there reading the swing, you go, oh, maybe I should go back to a fastball. Hitters typically don't come off the fastball, but in this situation, you know you're getting. 58% breaking balls out of Braddish, so you could almost sit on one. Two in the bank. Rangers looking for more. One, two to Marcus Simeon. Got him with a good breaking pitch. Went to the curveball. The strand the bases loaded. He gets his seventh K of the game, but the Rangers get the game's first two runs. And Dolis Garcia got it started. The rookie Carter involved again. Two to nothing, middle four. This one presented by Booking.com. It has turned into a gorgeous day here in Baltimore. Two to nothing. Texas in front is Adley Rutschman. Leads off against Andrew Heaney and Whoa. takes strike one. When Adley Rutschman arrived here, May 21st last year, really felt like the official day where the Orioles returned to relevance. Felt like it at the time, and it's only looked like it more and more since. As he flies his ball to center field for Tavares. And the first out of the fourth inning. Player profile sponsored by Liberty Mutual. He was the first pick of the draft in 2019. He was the hope for the Orioles. He was what they pointed to and said, hey, Adley's coming. Our day will arrive sooner rather than later. We talk about this team being inexperienced in the postseason. Well, Adley Rutschman playing in his first big league postseason game, but was a College World Series legend. We set a record there with 17 hits. In one trip to Omaha, they walked him intentionally with the bases loaded. He was so good. And since getting to the big leagues, it's really amazing when there's as much hype as there was around Rutschman for a guy to be able to live up to it and even exceed it. Well, it is amazing. He's playing in a premier position. You know, you always say you want to be good up the middle to have a good foundation to your organization. Well, they've established that. Good up the middle. And he's behind all of it processing information getting the pitching staff through and then obviously handling the the bat the way he does he doesn't swing and miss a lot he's always in the middle of everything and there's no wonder why they've been successful with him in the lineup Santander takes oh. a strike Anthony Santander has got Baltimore's only hit against Andrew Heaney single back in the first inning that's the only base runner against Heaney and here we are in the fourth with this 32 year old from Oklahoma City. Turned him into a big part of the story today. Oh! Three and two. Now they didn't decide that Heaney was going to be the guy that started this game until late last night. Yeah, that wall had something to do with it. I'm convinced. That wall we talked about, being left-handed and the right-handed power, it takes a little bit more to get there. But he's just done everything you need to do. A little off the barrel here, a little off the plate here, up and in, get a little wild, get back in the count. Frustrating a team that had that time off that's been a little rusty offensively, and now he's got a lead to work with. From 3 0 to 3 and 2, and we'll do it again. Ahini, a former ninth overall pick of the draft, 11 years ago with the Marlins. He's a top prospect. He debuted with the Marlins. They sent him to the Angels, and that's where he spent the majority of his career. 
Went to the Yankees at the end of the 21 season, struggled mightily, but now kind of recaptured some of that early career promise last year with the Dodgers. Parlayed that into the two year deal with the Rangers. He issues his first walk of the day, and Santander has reached both times. And the big difference between the two pitchers, Heaney has only induced three swing and misses. So it's not like he's going to blow your way or uh, have a lot of swings and misses. He relies on pitch location to make you hit it where he wants you to hit it. And so far, it's been a lot of soft contact. Ryan Mountcastle grounded out his first time, bangs a base hit down the line. That'll scoop by Carter all the way to the wall. Santander busted around third. He hits for the plate. He'll score. And the Orioles have broken through. Ryan Mountcastle with an RBI double, and it's two to one. When you play a lot of close games, you're not nervous about these moments. And you crawl and grind your way back into it. And this is a great job of being aggressive early and hooking it down the line. I'll tell you what, I didn't know if he was going to score, but he was picking them up and putting them down Ooh. for a big, big guy in Santander. And a huge, huge moment for the Orioles in their first real, first postseason experience to get right back in the game against the Texas Rangers. Right after the Rangers get their first runs, the Orioles with a response, and it's Ryan Mountcastle. You know, before there was Adley Rutschman, before there was Gunnar Henderson, it was Ryan Mountcastle who was the future, who was the hope for the Orioles yeah, as he, a first-round pick in 2015. He's like, hey, guys, I'm a number one. <laughs> right. I'm here. I've hit pretty well. What about me? Dane Dunning begins to warm, and as Gunnar Henderson stands in, we go down to Ken. Talked about the wall and the effect it can have on a game. We saw it right there. Because the wall is so far from home plate, the throws for outfielders are longer. Base runners can take more chances. Anthony Santander took advantage. And now tying run in scoring position for Gunnar Henderson. You said look out for on the first pitch. Yeah. Took it in the dirt. And that was part of Mike Maddox's meeting out there, too, to remind him, hey, we're okay. Man on second. You've been pitching good. Just don't lay one in there for Gunnar Henderson, who from left-handed pitching has had his struggles this year. But man, oh man, he sticks his nose in there, and it wouldn't surprise me that he works this count to his favor. Time taken. Hitters can take one timeout during each at bat. And this first postseason with the new rules with the pitch clock. Uh, this 1 0 pitch, Henderson. Takes ball two outside. It's also the first postseason with the shift band. You've got to have both fielders or two fielders on each side of second base. We've seen batting averages go up across baseball, run production up, more action, more fun. 2 0. Pop up, left side of the diamond. Seeger's back. Carter's on, and it's Corey Seeger to catch it. Two away. Two of the best teams with runners in scoring position offensively. Baltimore really, really good. And that's why, again, if you're going to play those kind of close games, you have to cash in and two outs. Nothing, nothing more of a dagger to a team than getting a two-out run. And that's what they're looking to do right now. They were the best in baseball with two outs. Bruce Poach is coming out. It looks like that is going to do it. For Andrew Heaney Hicks is a switch hitter that is way better against lefties. Yep. And Bochy's got to be thrilled with what he got out of Heaney today. No doubt. Last minute choice. I want to set up uh, Dunning and how he's been and how important he's been to the Rangers. Zor Jalen Hurts and the Eagles taking on Matthew Stafford and the Rams or other regional action. Check for the game in your area tomorrow on Fox and the Fox Sports app.
Rangers into the bullpen after three and two thirds from Andrew Heaney runner at second his responsibility but all told a successful outing and a surprise outing for a lot of people that Heaney was the guy because most people thought Dane Dunning was going to start this game. He's the first man out of the bullpen had an awesome first half struggled a little bit in the second half. He's the co MVP of unsung pitchers that have stayed healthy and done dual roles in the bullpen starting for most of the year. He's going to be a finesse pitcher with a good breaking ball good secondary stuff. He wants to pitch down in the zone. He wants to get him to swing over that breaking ball back foot. Aaron Hicks stays in there but flips around to the left side his on base plus slugging is 300 points lower from this side of the plate. So this is why the timing for this move from the lefty Heaney to the righty Dunning. Tying run at second. That's Mountcastle. Hicks pops it foul. Not a play. It's one and one. Released by the Yankees. Renewed here in Baltimore. Aaron Hicks is hardly playing anymore with the Yankees. They cut him loose. The Orioles pick him up right around when Cedric Mullins injures his groin. And Hicks has had his best year in a long time. Yeah, he sure has. Let's see if he's got the touch to throw that change up against Hicks. That's a a little bit of a problem. The slider fell behind two and one. Now Hicks is the one guy in this Orioles team with a bunch of postseason experience. 30 games when he was with the Yankees. He's the only guy on this Orioles roster that's played in more than five postseason games. On a two one from Dunning. Hicks is out in front. And it's two and two. He'll throw a cutter, sinker, curveball, slider, changeup. He's got it all. <laughs> and he really is trying to be, because there's no one pitch where you go, wow, that number analytically looks unbelievable. He just knows how to pitch. And when he throws strikes and keeps it down, he's effective. Here's his two two. Yeah. Count goes full. And you put that whole package together for Dane Dunning. The 28 year old from Florida has had his best season 370 ERA lifesaver for this rotation times he's been the glue that's held it all together. Here come the shadows and here comes the 3 2 picks view of it okay. takes ball four. how about Dunning in the preseason offseason before the season you're thinking oh my goodness. I mean he he visibly was upset for about 24 hours when they made all those moves and added those pitchers. What does that say about but he has been great filling wherever they needed on the year and it's been proven with his year that he's had and the record that we just showed. Well those moves that they made that had him so disappointed meant that he had to fight for a spot in the bullpen and he pitched really well out of there. It's going to face a pinch hitter here in Adam Frazier and then it was DeGrom's injury that opened the door for Dunning to move into the rotation. And with this pinch hitter announced, quick visit here on the mound from Jonah Heim. Now this postseason, get the best 5G coverage in the game with T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. There is Scherzer, who they thought they might get back for this division series, not quite ready, though they're crossing their fingers that if they can advance to the championship series, Scherzer could be in play. So two on and two out and a guy that has made his name in Baltimore as a good pitch hitter Adam Frazier pinch hitting for Jordan Westberg and taking ball one. He's one of those guys really doesn't typically expand too much. He, he finds the barrel of the bat to the ball. I know the average doesn't show it but. He'll make contact. He's ahead two and all. It's a guy who hit above 300 and was yeah. an all star a couple years ago. One of those short term contracts the Orioles have handed out, benefited from. On a 2 0 pitch, Frazier swings and misses. That sinker moves a mile. Yeah, that sinker is a big part of his weaponry that he'll be able to follow that sinker when he's ahead with that changeup. But he'll use both sides of the plate to be effective. He won't just stay in one area. Two on, two out, and a 2 1 from Dunning. Frazier. Pops it up. Low at first as it's spotted, and that'll do it for the Orioles. Both teams get on the board here in the fourth, two to one.
Hats, caps, t shirts, and more. And root your favorite team on MLBShop.com. New second baseman in the game, Adam Frazier, after pinch hitting for Jordan Westberg, stays in. Frazier has not been good defensively this season, so that becomes a weak spot out there for Baltimore. Cal Bradish was able to limit the damage, getting out of the bases loaded jam without further damage in that fourth inning. Stays in to face Corey Seager. Remember that strikeout, John, as this game goes on, because they'd love to take him as deep as they can. I don't know if he was going to stay in if he didn't get Simeon. Yeah, no chance he was staying in, and I think they did a nice job being able to battle out of that. Hold it to two, now down one. Look, everybody's passed the uh, early test. You get into a game, you haven't played for a while, you're only one run down. That was the big part of this narrative. But could Baltimore start off good or get ahead or have an early kind of uh, momentum? And they got it back in the fourth inning, and they're right in the ball game. Then they need their stud to hold them down. Speaking of studs, Corey Seeger's up there leading off this fifth. One ball and two strikes. They were two for ten off the fastball and four for eight off the breaking balls and it just keep speaking to the narrative of what you have to do and how good you have to be to face the Texas Rangers offense on this one two Seager takes high count evens up the British saw him a couple times earlier this year gave up just one run over eight and a third against Texas those games are a long time ago though both series between the teams back before the start of June. A lot has changed since. 2-2 two, two to Seeger outside full count. Didn't they put him on the I.L.? Yeah, Didn't he got him? he got hit by a comebacker first start of the year against these Rangers. That was a big part of why he started off sluggish. He never felt like his manager never felt like he got connected with his mechanics mechanics after that. But boy, he's connected in the second half. 3-2 mm -hmm. to Seeger. Fought off left side. Urias has no play. Seeger able to put it in play, and he's got an infield hit to open the fifth. Well, I tried to find a bad number on Singer. Seeger, you can't. Right, left, hits over 300. Every month, hits over 300 just about. Every situation, hits over 300. And it's because of stuff like this that you're having a great year that you combine his average and power and his position he plays to your point. No doubt would have put a lot of stress. On Otani, if he'd have been healthy all year, who knows what his numbers would have looked like. They missed a month early with a hamstring, missed MVP. time late with a thumb sprain. That's a strike oh. on Grossman. Now the thumb sprain that Seeger suffered, they thought he was going to be out for a really long time. That was late July. He only missed 10 days, and so that has lingered some, and he's still been able to perform the way that he has, sitting 327. Falling just shy of a batting title, hitting 33 home runs, leading the league in doubles, even though he winds up missing about 40 games. Yeah, the, the, the Rangers, you could almost make the case. They look, injuries are part of every team. We all get it. But they were beat up offensively and on the mound. Their third baseman got hurt, their catcher got hurt. I mean, big, big time injuries when guys were rolling, when they were having great offensive years. 0-2 oh, to Grossman. He's in there for strike three. Fastball to the top of the zone, and Bradish has his eighth. Well, that's that two-seamer. Man, oh man, what a luxury. That ball starts on the inner part of the plate and covers the entire plate, and Grossman's probably saying that ball's high. He's in a low crouch. Yep, that's exactly what he's saying. Thinking it was high, but it caught top of the zone. One on one out for Adolis Garcia. Uh, he's gone after that pitch first couple times up there, lays off this time. Well, he's also dealing with a different uh, viewpoint with the shadows. And I always ask my catcher when you're in these situations, what can't you see? Because hmm. I'm going to throw that. <laughs> yeah, because <Right? laughs> that means they can't <laughs> see it. Swing and a miss. One on one. You gotta remember as a pitcher, as excited as you get about the shadows, you still have to execute your pitches and make it as tough on the hitter as possible to pick up spin. Light to darkness. That's a good take right there. And that's something, John, that Adolis Garcia has done a whole lot more of this year. He's taken those pitches that before, and he still chases him some, before it was no brainer he was chasing. Yeah. 
you're right about that and he's done a nice job and you got to sacrifice something to gain something right so maybe the fastball he's a little less on plane he crushes fastballs that are over the middle of the plate for power because that's what he does but to your point he's been improving ever so slightly on that breaking ball 30 years old in his third full year just keeps on getting better little tweak after little tweak he's always had that thunder in his bat but a little more refined game now this has to be off the plate if he's going to go back to the breaking ball you, you really want it off the plate he won't chase fastballs away off the plate but he'll obviously chase a breaking ball that looks like it's on the plate and ends up off the plate he's got Seeger at first with one away Let's see what he gets on 2-2. It is a breaking ball and he lays off. Wow, just two more inches starting on that plate. There's no chance he stays off that. That was so late and sharp that if he, he can throw it again and start it on the plate with that same break and it almost can't lay off of it if you're the hitter. Third largest improvement in baseball in chase rate at laying off those pitches. He's laid off a couple tough ones on three two. He swings through one that was hung. And he's down on strikes. But again, the break is so much more important. You always want to have location, but if you've got great break, you can get away with bad location. And he does here. I mean, that ball, as you mentioned, up. If it's down a little bit, it probably gets crushed. That is going to do it for Bradish. Think maybe a little earlier than we were anticipating. Four and two thirds. The bullpen goes to work in a two one game in game one. Cast your vote for the top offensive performer in each league today by scanning the QR code or enter at MLB.com slash Aaron. Well, I had to double check this. And Brad Bradish comes out of the game hoping that his bullpen will hold it right there. I had to double check this. I asked you earlier, 0 for 10. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Carter's 0 for 10 against lefties. That's why the move. This is a funky lefty that falls all over the place and still makes his pitches tough to pick up if you're a left hander yeah, and Carter had reached both times against Bradish takes ball one from Coulomb and even in the minors he was only a 229 hitter against left handed pitching this is just the difference in the postseason for Brandon Hyde managing his first postseason game way more aggressive than he'd be in the regular season. Coulomb falls behind 2 and 0. Yeah, he's going to throw about 75% of breaking balls between his slider and his curveball. And you can see how pitches off the third base side of the rubber and falls almost to third base when he's delivering that pitch. 2 0 pitch in there for a oh. strike. And again, you know, hitters are looking at arm slot and release point, but you can't help but look at his body. Where did he go? He's <laughs> disappearing. And so that funkiness has allowed him to be effective, especially against left handers. Yeah, one of the best in the AL against lefties this year, his first year in Baltimore. That is fouled straight back, and it's two and two. Get your glove, John. That was the shadows and <laughs> didn't pick up that too. ball till too late. Yeah. This is why John was not going to catch that ball. Could not see it. Couldn't see it. <laughs> On a 2 2 pitch, Carter takes ball three. Well, these are the battles you have to win in the postseason. The neutral counts 3 2. Go one or two ways, obviously, and the Texas Rangers are so comfortable getting the three ball counts. And we already documented how good they are at that. Seeger, who started this inning with a single, gets a head start from first on this payoff that Carter takes for ball four. Wow. They bring on the lefty to face him, and he earns his second walk of the day. He's reached all three times in this game, and in his first postseason, at the age of 21, he's reached in 10 of his 11 times up there. Well, that could be very, very huge because you don't know how long they were going to stick with the lefty here with a switch hitter coming up to start the inning they could have gone a different direction. But nonetheless. Big two out opportunity for the Rangers and Jonah Heim was sitting 375 this year with runners in scoring position and has an RBI hit today.
Seager at second, Carter at first. All star catcher Jonah Hyde chops one to short for Henderson, who go to second and end the inning. Halfway home in game one. It is two to one, Texas. Game one of the division series, two to one, Rangers in front. Cedric Mullins takes inside, ball one from Dane Dunning. Eight, nine, and one coming to the plate for the Orioles here in the fifth. Long time O popped out to short his first time. Takes a strike oh. here, one and one. Dane Dunning on for Andrew Heaney. Missed his spot there, fell behind two and one. Tried to throw him a change up there. Mullins has had a home run against Dunning. Two and two. Yeah, this season, Dunning pitched just once against Baltimore. His way back on April 4th at four scoreless innings of relief. Bullpen continues to go. Bradford gets loose. All the runs in this game coming in the fourth inning. 2-2 Two -two to Mullins. Fly to left center field. Tavares on the move with Carter, who's got it. So both these managers having to make decisions early on in this game when it comes to their pitchers. One of them is kind of a rock in the, you know, in the rocking chair on a Saturday afternoon here in Bruce Bochy. The other one in Brandon Hyde managing his first postseason game. This is Bruce Bochy's 80th postseason game managed. Yeah, a little different Bruce Bochy team, meaning he relied on some horses for most of his career where he could pencil in his starters and they'll go seven. Oh. Today was not going to be one of those days, and I've heard so many compliments about Brandon Hyde and the, the way he handles his bullpen, the way he handles everything, and certainly he's hoping for a long, long postseason run over the next three or four years, but you couldn't get a bigger gap between the no. two managers. Coach is in his 26th year as a manager after three years away. 12 years with the Padres, 13 years with the Giants, and then he retired. And the Rangers pulled him out of retirement. Here's a soft bounce off of the bat of Urias, and no chance for Young, whose only try was to bare hand and couldn't get it cleanly. Infield hit for the nine hitter, Urias. have to hit him over 100 miles an hour just hit him in places where it puts pressure on the defense soft contact worked out well there as a pitcher you always want to give up soft contact even if it hurts <laughs> and, <laughs> that one hurt. it, huh? <laughs> and so tying run aboard one gone in this fifth inning top of the order in Austin Hayes how big of a deal can a manager make and it's obvious in a postseason game with the moves but just the presence in the clubhouse over a season how big a deal can it be having Bruce Bochy. Oh it's huge especially where they came from right they hadn't had success they were losing and it's just a, it's just a confidence that hey man this guy's been through every situation and you can tell that he was the right man because this season hasn't been the prototypical like smooth sailing. No. It's been a rocky ship that they've been on and he just studied it. He didn't get carried away either way and been there done that. That helps for a manager to manage these times. On the ground to third Young's got this one to second one to first they turn two. Around the horn they go five four three to finish off the fifth. Division series Texas Rangers with a two to one lead all the runs in this game coming in the fourth inning Rangers coming to bat in the six with the bottom part of the order it's Nathaniel Lowe leading off and a check swing tapper in front of the plate Rutschman grabs it and that'll do for Danny Coulomb this is probably going to be the only guy he faces in this inning and it's one pitch and he's out of there. So the left hander does his job John pretty good feeling to uh -huh. uh, Come in that situation and leave to the bullpen that will finish this game for the Warriors. Jacob Webb's going to come in here with the righty Young coming up.
has awakened with the Orioles back in the postseason for the first time in seven years. Hosting postseason baseball for the first time in nine years. You can customize your feed, get personalized stats and highlights, and enjoy free live streams with the MLB app. Your home for postseason baseball. Download the MLB app today. So they go from Coulomb to Webb, who they picked up from the Angels late this season. Remember, the Angels dumped all those guys onto waivers, and Orioles, one of the teams that benefited from that. Yeah, and uh, they definitely have benefited from a collective effort picking up the slack for their dominant closer that they unfortunately lost in Bautista. This guy's going to be fastball, curve, change against right handed hitters. Josh Young takes that oh. fastball for a strike. Three years in Atlanta to start Webb's career. Yeah, came over to the Orioles after spending most of this season with the Angels. Was excellent in his first month, but shaky down the stretch. One ball, one strike. Young's 0 for 2 today. This is where this Rangers lineup really starts to feel deep, mm -hmm. long, when you have Young hitting eight. Flies it to center field. Mullins is going back on the track at the wall. It's gone. And the rookie out of the eighth spot goes deep to center field. Rangers up 3 1. Well, he was the one of the Rangers rolling before he got hurt, missed a long period of time, and can just tell that feeling felt pretty good. Tied with the Twins for the most home runs in the AL this year. Leody Tavares takes a ball against left-handers. He's primarily fastball changeup. And the Rangers have been pretty streaky. They started one for 11 in this game, then went up five for six coming into that before that home run, one for six. What a good sign for the Rangers getting young going these last two games. Four extra base hits the last two games. He had two extra base hits in his two weeks off of the injured list to finish the year. Now the nine hitter Tavares is one for two. Texas trying to get a third consecutive win to start this postseason. Now, I don't know if we've talked enough John about how shocking this is what they're doing this week. You know, they blow the division in such disappointing fashion. They don't just blow the division but then they have to fly six hours. Yeah. They fly right over Dallas and they're looking down there Dallas forward saying are you kidding me we got to fly by here on to St. Pete and keep on playing instead of getting the week off. Ball four taken by Tavares. Another look at the home run but to go through all that and then play the way they played in St. Pete and the way they're playing so far today it's remarkable. It is remarkable and resilient because that's the only words you can can come up with because they went to Seattle four games the magic number was one to clinch a playoff any version of that. They lose the first two games. A lot of things happened that made it now they had to win the next two to guarantee the division. They win the third game. And all they got to do is win game four against a team that had been eliminated in Seattle and they lost one to nothing. That's an array of emotions that would cripple most teams. And again, they went down into a very, very good raised team and shut them down. And this is after they were in first place for 160 days this year. I mean, it was. From the start of the season until mid August, yep. wire to wire, back to the top of the order in Simeon, and then they just rode that roller coaster of the final two months right into the last weekend. Now, that's also reason why they're optimistic about where they're at, because it seems they've turned the corner again, playing so well in St. Pete this week. They're hoping it's the start of another hot run. And how many times have you seen in the postseason? It's just that team that finds it at the right time that winds up wearing rings. Well and that's the unpredictability of short series when you have to go to a lot of pitchers you don't know what each guy is capable of doing when you have to use that many pieces to be successful and then their two wins 
they didn't have to use that many pieces in, the, in against the race. In this game they're going to have to use some but the Orioles now are pressed in to using a lot more resources. And right now Webb has not found the strike zone on a consistent. You wonder how much that home run shocked his system to miss the middle or corners of the strike zone. Tavares at first, 2 0 comes home. That's ball three on Simeon, who's the only Ranger at this point without a hit in this game. 0 3 with a couple K's, all that against Bradish. Swings away to 3 0, sends a fly ball to right center field. Mullins to the track, he gets there. Back to first goes to Veritz, two out. And that likely will be it for Webb. The lefty Seeger coming up. And it will. Brandon Hyde out of that dugout again and go back into the bullpen where D.L. Hall's ready to roll. Rangers have added a run in the home run from Josh Young. Three to one. They've got the lead in game one. Games in this postseason have 15 extra base hits after Josh Young launched a home run, and they lead three to one here in Game One of the Division Series. Top of the sixth inning, Rangers have a runner at first base, and Corey Seager coming to the plate. And the postseason continues next. Game one of the other ALDS, the Twins and the Astros, right here on FS1. And then the National League side gets going later today. Phillies and Braves, D backs and Dodgers, both over on TBS. Game two of this series, we got a great pitching matchup. Jordan Montgomery was fantastic in the wild card round. Grayson Rodriguez has been one of the best in baseball in the second half. Corey Seager swings and misses at D.L. Hall's first pitch. Fastball sliders primarily against left-handers. You saw the slider right there, and he's trying to quiet this offense who's already scored one. Hall is a former first-round pick, 2017. Made it to the majors last year, struggled. This season dealt with an injury for a lot of the season, was dealing with a back issue, so a lot of the year in AAA, a lot of it just trying to get that back right. Came up for good in late August and a sub three ERA from that point forward. Somebody they're going to lean on here, and trust in the late innings. Two and one on Seeger. And while there are more options for the Orioles in the bullpen that they feel good about, you've touched on it, but they no longer have the mountain man at the back end. Where before, in the words of Brandon Hyde, this was an eight inning game. You knew you got it to the ninth with Bautista, game over. They got to figure out the ninth inning now and it's not like they have just a plug and play guy. It's going to be different every night. Yeah they rallied together and actually held the held their own without Bautista statistically. And there's the numbers right there but still it's a it's a factor that's gone. It's a fear factor. It's that leverage. Three and two on Seager. Like when you if this if these two teams were, were boxers you're going to fear the offense of Texas. That's their punch. You're going to fear the starting staff and the bullpen of the Orioles. Whereas everything else, you had to match these two teams. They're pretty close in every area. Yeah, it does feel like if you're doing the old NFL, yeah. which phase wins comparison, the bullpen is the biggest gap between the teams. Right. Offensively, you give the advantage to Texas. Defensively, maybe to Texas, but then the check marks start coming into Baltimore. Seeker takes the walk. Fourth of the day drawn by the Rangers. Again, this is not just power. These guys draw more walks than anybody in the AL as well. Two out chance for Robbie Grossman. Uh, the first Rangers hit in this game back in the first inning struck out looking twice after that against Bradish. He's got Tavares at second and Seager at first. Hall comes home. Grossman fights it off foul. 
Switch hitter that is a lot better from this side of the plate. Above 300 against lefties, around 200 against righties. And facing a lefty here in Hall. Josh Spores. Already in the Rangers bullpen. 3 1 game, sixth inning. Grossman takes a little low. Well, Texas has done a good job taking this unbelievable crowd kind of out of the game, right? They've been so electric, so on fire, but they knew the capacity that they had offensively. And they're hoping that this is the only and the last rally because what they can do is we talked about they can separate you they can get those crooked numbers. On this 2 1 Grossman oh. didn't want to but ball found the bat and a foul ball strike two. Royals try to keep it right here. They led the majors and comeback wins this year. One of the best teams in major in the majors in close games this year. They know they've got that Texas bullpen vulnerable. On 2 2, Grossman swings and misses. That's strike three. Rangers get a run and the home run from Josh Young. His wonderful rookie season continues here in October. It's 3 1, middle six. Add peanuts to my grocery list. Hey Siri, give me a hot dog. Two, three, and four coming up for the Orioles. Down 3 1 here in game one. It's Adley Rutschman the leadoff. He's 0 for 2 today. And he takes oh. strike one from Dane Dunning. How about the Texas Rangers pitching? They're dominant in the wild card round. And then again today, just one run. Heaney and Dunning combining. Yeah, they've done a great job to get to this point. It's crucial for the Orioles to get some action on the bases and force the hand of Bruce Bochy and get deeper into that pen. The longer, the more outs that Dunning can get, the shorter the game, obviously. And he can go to a higher leverage. Look, their bullpen numbers are not great, but their their strength is in, a, in short numbers, a couple guys. They can definitely win this thing if they shorten the game and have their starters keep go deep. But that's been the key. Can they do that? And the Orioles has got to make it as tough as possible right here by creating some havoc for them. Oh. Rutschman takes strike three. Dunning's first strikeout. One gone in the six. This guy has been steady Eddie. I mean, he's not flashy. There's nothing that pops out, but he just does what I told you earlier. In, out. Change speeds, break a ball here, change eye level here. Oh. Slow curve, 75 for a strike on Santander. And look, this guy's been really mostly part of the rotation, but coming out of the bullpen, it totally changes as you're touching on. The field down there, Santander hammers the ball. After 28 during the regular season, Santander hits his first of the postseason, and it's a 3-2 game. This is what they do. They're relentless. They've matched them again. The two runs they scored in the fourth, they came back with a run. And just like that. The problem is they can't match them the rest of the way. <laughs> they got to overtake them at some point in the run department and certainly this got that crowd fired up and on their feet again. Mountcastle quickly 0 2 on him. 
Santander, the longest tenured Oriole, having his best season here in a year that it didn't look like he was ever going to get to. Seeing it on the other side, seeing the Orioles win because his name was brought up in trade rumor after trade rumor because not that he was a good chip, but because he was looked at as dispensable. Tom Castle digs this one out near to center field for Tavares. Not only does he stick around and get to see it out on the other side, but he's been a key contributor right in the middle of things in that lineup. Well, that was just great extension and locked in on that pitch. And another guy that can get locked in against right handers is Gunnar Henderson. Who is coming up here? And Bruce Bochy. Coming out of that dugout, knowing the same thing you're touching on, which is that 25 of Henderson's 28 home runs this season have come from this side of the plate or against that style of pitching against right handers. And so Will Smith, who has struggled mightily, is going to come in to try and give him the platoon advantage here. Santander wanted it off the plate, but this ball leaks right middle, but down. And that's the difference between a ball going 400 feet and a ground out. That location about three, four inches. And Santander did not miss it. What do you think of the decision to go to Will Smith here, who has struggled a ton, but gives you the platoon advantage over Henderson? Yeah, it gives you the platoon advantage, and it really is rolling the dice on getting one hitter out, because that'll be the only batter he faces if he gets him out. Obviously, if he doesn't, he's got to face a minimum of three before you get the last out of the inning. So a lot of breaking balls and trying to take advantage of that platoon spit, split that we talked about with Gunnar Henderson against left-handers. Henderson 0 for 2 in his postseason debut. He takes an off speed pitch for a strike. And to your point, the big one is if Henderson can reach, you've got Hicks on deck who destroys left handed pitching. Yeah. He can't make a change, obviously, if he doesn't get Gunner out in this inning. He'll face a minimum of three hitters. Back to back breaking pitches 0 and 2. But he's always had that pitch. And when he can make that pitch, it makes his fastball, which isn't. 98 but it makes it feel like whenever he throws a fastball it speeds it up because the hitter seeing breaking ball after breaking ball 11 year veteran Will Smith home with an 0 2 another breaking pitch this one misses 11 seasons in the big leagues 20 postseason games for Smith the World Series of Atlanta two years ago. Is one two in the dirt. And that's four in a row, and you don't feel like he would have the the guts to throw a fastball here on two two, but if he threw it on the outside part of the plate, it would lock up Gunnar Henderson. But he's going to go. It feels like he's got that. He's got the wind working in the right direction, meaning it's going to make his breaking ball break more the direction the wind's going. On 2-2. Two, two. Goes no back to it and strikes him out. Five consecutive breaking balls from Will Smith, who retires Gunnar Henderson. Deficit cut in half, though, on a home run from Anthony Santander. After six innings in game one, it's a one-run game. Part of the Rangers order coming up leading by a run in the seventh the Dolis Garcia goes after D.L. Hall's first pitch dumps it back foul. Garcia's one for three started the rally in the fourth inning with a double and came in to score. Second in the league in home runs second in the league and runs knocked in. Yeah, down 0 and 2 here. It's just amazing the blueprint that we've laid out on how these teams go about their business but Baltimore and just the to win 100 games you think they would blow some people out more than not right they just don't and it it weighs obviously on the manager and the coaching staff but the team just feels like they're going to win close games and so far 
they do that very well. Yeah, it is one of the big separators when you're looking at these two teams head to head. Swing and a miss. Small strikes out Garcia. Baltimore is second in the majors in one run games at 30 and 16. Texas, the third worst team in the majors in one run games at 14 and 22. And the comeback wins, too, with the way that Baltimore can come back speaks volumes to all those games that are close that they end up on the win side. Oh, you know, there, there's all kinds of metrics and metrics will tell you that's not a good formula to repeat itself every year, right? One 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 run wins is not something you can count on all the time, but you got to take advantage of it when you're going through a year and they have Evan Carter has reached all three times and has reached in 10 of his 11 plate appearances in this postseason. One ball, one strike. And there's something to be said, too, though, for knowing how to win those close yeah. games. Yeah, there is. And, and 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 you feel like when you're in these situations, you just feel like you're going to win them, whether or not you get to do all that. I, I, I like it, you know, and obviously you get to do a lot of football. Minnesota Vikings last year won all those one possession, you know, games last year. And then this year it hasn't turned out so yeah. well. But that's what happens year to year. You never know. The formula it's going to take and, and the special sauce that the Baltimore Orioles have is inside that locker room and in in every uniform that they're wearing they're together. Stirring up that old Orioles magic this year and those close game wins those comeback wins have been a big part of this young group finding that belief early finding belief before they get into this first chance in the postseason. On a 2 2 to Carter. He grounds one right side. Backhand Mountcastle. Race to the back. Hall is there. Wow. Not an easy play. You have no idea as a pitcher how hard a play <laughs> that is for a left hander to kind of receive a bullet. I mean, a throw that's on the move. You've got to see the bag, see the ball in the glove. The left hander falls away from the situation where he's trying to go. And then he's got a spin and turn and a little bit of a shadow. Woo. That play can go awry quick. Mm -hmm. Two up and two down for Hall in this seventh inning. 3 2 game. Jonah Heim to the plate. One for three today. Good breaking pitch. Strike one. Lifts a fly ball to the left field corner. Hayes on the move. Austin Hayes with a diving, tumbling catch. And he's got it cooking again at Camden Yards as we go to the seventh inning stretch in a one run game in game one. Young, the difference in this game, his home run has the Rangers in front three to two as we go to the bottom of the seventh. And the Rangers, John, feel good if they can get the game to the eighth and the ninth inning where they've got Chapman and they've got LeClerc. Here's your X factor. Here's Josh Spores, who's when he's right, he's been straight up dominant, but he's really struggled the last couple of months. Yeah, he can be dominant, dominant. That 97 mile an hour fastball. And you couple that with the uh, slider and the curveball that he throws. It's a huge inning for the Texas Rangers, obviously, for what you just said. And this type of game, you never know. Obviously, one hit. And the uh, Orioles are always one hit, it seems, away from getting back in it and taking the lead. Aaron Hicks takes ball one from Spores. Hicks, Frazier, Mullins coming up for the Orioles. Down three to two here in game one of the division series. Both these teams in the postseason for the first time in seven years. Two years removed from losing more than 100 games, these clubs. 2 0 on Hicks. More than just feel good stories, though. More than just, oh, how cute they got in. Right. These are two teams that feel like. They have as a legitimate a chance to win it all as anybody. Yeah, this series is going to be played almost like this 
every game, I feel. 2 0. Ball three on Hicks. And the X Factor is going to be some of those guys who haven't been in this moment. They get out of themselves. They, they get a little bit, the moment gets a little too big. But for the Orioles, lead off walk. They feel like they've been in big moments all year, even though it's not postseason moments. Hey, it's time for a game break. Say hello to our friend Kevin Burkhardt. Yes, and five consecutive balls from Josh Spores, who he said is going to be the X factor, and so far it's going in the wrong direction for Texas. Amped up, fastballs a little bit out of the uh, strike zone, and he's trying to find it. Your mind's working like a computer, trying to get it done as fast as possible in this chaotic moment. Ball six. See, the one thing we touched about, the new rule changes, this is one thing that baseball and pitchers have had to learn. You don't have time to slow the game down. The game is going to be played by mound visits. That's the only way you can slide, slow it down because the pitch clock is going to create that moment to where you better be on because if you're not, the game can get away from you. You pitched in 41 postseason games, and you said one of your tricks in the postseason especially was when it got going like this, you just step off and take a minute. You can't. Step off, look at everything you could possibly look at for 15 seconds, clear your mind, and then you've got a pitch violation in today's game. <laughs> a 2-0. Frazier takes ball three, and the walls are closing in on Josh Spores. Strike one on his eighth pitch. You just wonder in this situation, 3-1, you trust the guy at the plate. Do you send the runner knowing that he knows the strike zone? Not going. Three and two. <laughs> and it was good that he didn't because he <laughs> usually barrels up pitches when he's ahead in the count. Adam Frazier, who's hit more home runs than ever before this year. 13 of them in his first year in Baltimore. Here's a payoff. Pop fly into the bright sunshine in right. Garcia's got it located. And Spores comes back to get the first out wow, of the inning. That is a huge change of events. Seven straight balls. Looking at first and second, nobody out. And now it's one out. And a runner at first base. What a comeback. Bochy's team by a run. One gone in the seventh inning. Tying run aboard. Cedric Mullins, the go-ahead run at the plate. And you just get the oh. sense that if this postseason run is long enough, and who knows how long it needs to be for this to be true, but Cedric Mullins is going to be at the heart of a big moment. Yeah, you know, he's got so much electricity in his game, and He's trying to find it, obviously, right now. On this 0-1, Mullins takes upstairs. I mean, he's had some huge moments down the stretch. He's had two consecutive walk-offs in games that he were able to walk off. A three-run homer in the ninth against the Astros, and then the game in Seattle. Bradford and Bush warming. 1-1. One, one. Fouled off one and two. Well, we'll get into it if he comes in, but it would be a huge story if Matt Bush pitched in this game. He's not pitched for the Rangers this year. <laughs> Came over from Milwaukee and went to Triple-A, but somebody who's been around has pitched in the postseason before on the roster. The one-two pitch. Got him to chase a back foot breaking ball, and Josh Bores has found it. Nasty breaking ball. He starts it on the inner part of the plate, and I mean that ball never even got there, and Mullins was committed. 
So two gone and a pinch hitter is going to come up here for Ramon Urias and it's one of the big stories for the Orioles this season. This is Ryan O'Hearn who was dumped by the Royals and now hits cleanup for the Orioles a lot of days. New life different guy. This guy was hitting about 219 220 in his time in Kansas City. They DFA'd him comes here to Baltimore didn't even make the opening day roster. Took a few injuries to get him a chance. And he has turned into a fan favorite, one of the best hitters in the AL. And now, a quick word from Adobe. That said, finished the regular season on an 0 for 23 slide. His last hit was 15 days ago. So you're saying he's due? <laughs> that would be as due as anybody's ever been. Lead off walk from Hicks. He's still at first. O'Hearn takes ball one. Michael Elias, GM of these Orioles, said that you, know, you got all these young guys, but right near the top of the list of the biggest reasons they've had the season they've had is this guy here, O'Hearn. Now on this 1 0 pitch, breaks oh. it in there for a strike one and one. Well, they hit 349 on the year with runners in scoring position. This is not exactly runners in scoring position, of course, with a runner on first, but that's the difference. The 1 1. 1 and 2 on O'Hearn. Josh Boris finds himself a strike away from going 1 2 3 after the leadoff walk, and he had gone 3 and 0 on the next hitter. His one two very high. Well, the Orioles have gotten all their damage this game on change ups believe it or not they haven't got a hit on anything other than a change up. Which is incredible when yeah. you think about it. Four for six on change ups with a homer. Tying run at first, go ahead, run at the plate. Ryan O'Hearn pinch hitting. Oh. And watches a fastball split the plate. Josh Spores missed with his first seven pitches of the inning and then found it. And retired him in order. Around the last time there was postseason baseball here, they're saying, Is it this intense, this stressful every time? 3 2 8 inning. D.L. Hall stays in, bottom of the Rangers order. A couple defensive changes for you. Jorge Mateo replaces uh, O'Hearn in the nine spot and plays short. And Henderson Whoa. moves over to third. One ball, one strike on Nathaniel Lowe. Lowe, Young, and Tavares coming up in this eighth inning. Hall has pitched Whoa. well. Yeah, he has. He's been throwing his fastball about 97 and mixing in a breaking ball. Holding fort here for boss for Baltimore here. Another one run game mm -hmm. right where they want him down by a run. Swing and a miss on the high fastball. Third K for D.L. Hall. So one gone in this eighth inning. The difference in this game at this point is Josh Young's home run back in the sixth inning. One of the four extra base hits in this game for the top offense in the AL. And they're going to bring in a new pitcher to face him. Hall gets a good hand after his postseason debut. 
Tyler Wells coming in for the O's. Balls. Accessible ways to play our great game. You can learn more, including how to find a league near you, by going to playball.org and follow at playball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Well, the kids are all right. For the Rangers, Evan Carter has continued at reaching three times in his four plate appearances. Josh Young, the difference in this game, his home run his last time up. And Rutschman and Henderson still looking for their first hit. New pitcher into the game, John. This is Tyler Wells, who is their best starting pitcher in the first half. His arm started to get tired, didn't pitch as well, went down to AAA, but he's come up at the end of the year in the bullpen, and his stuff has played up. Yeah, top of the zone fastball, likes to throw up in the zone, and I'll tell you what, if he gets that top of the zone strike call, he's going to be virtually unhittable, and that's where he lives and throws in the release point. Tall guy works in his favor. Brandon Hyde brought on a new pitcher for Young last time, and Young took him deep. That was when Webb came in, and this is what the delay is for getting this shot. Yeah. No, you. You need that door shot. Ah, we had to have everybody off. And now ready to go. So Young. Who now has four extra base hits in his last two games during his first trip to the postseason? First one from Wells is hit foul. This is one of the guys talking to Bruce Bochy. He said he's he works. It's a hard worker, but he feels like sometimes he does too much work. He'll stay in the cage forever at midnight at night after a game. And I asked Bruce, have you ever had to tell somebody to back off? He said, Yeah, this would be one of mm -hmm. those guys. Midnight sometimes said he'd come in here at 6 a.m. if the place was unlocked. Lofts this breaking pitch into shallow right field. Aaron Hicks will cruise under it and put him away two out. Down to Ken Rosenthal. Well, Josh Young fell in love with the history of baseball when he was 10 years old. And two of his favorite players, Jackie Robinson and Brooks Robinson. So in his first year of pro ball, he actually mentioned Brooks in an interview before his team at high A faced the Orioles affiliate in the 2019 South Atlantic League playoffs. On the day of game one of those playoffs, he received a package from Brooks. There was a postcard in there, a bobblehead. He was in heaven. Oh. Strike on Tavares. 23 seasons, all of them in Baltimore for the great Brooks Robinson. And Josh said before the game today, just seeing those things around the field makes it extra special being able to play here. Especially that one over there by third base where Josh is playing. There's number five tributes all around the stadium and the clubhouse, the warehouse out beyond right field. One of the all time greats passed away last Tuesday. Wells to Tavares with an 0 2 pitch. Got him with a fastball. To the bottom of the eighth we go. Rangers three, Orioles two. John that doesn't need much introduction. It's a role as Chapman out of the Rangers bullpen. Yeah, he's going to come at you. Hayes loves the first pitch hitting 456 coming into this. So it'll be action pitch right away for Chapman and Hayes. 3 2 bottom of the eighth here in the best of five game one. First one from Chapman is a little bit outside ball one. Chapman's changed a little bit as out pitch will go to that two seamer instead of the four seamer that he throws. And he'll throw that wrinkle which you saw right away. This Slider. The sinker leak hitting below 100 against 1 0 to Hayes. Outside for ball two. So Chapman is not the oldest Chapman of old. There are still flashes of it. Rangers acquired him from the Royals on June 30th, and he looked like older oldest Chapman for the first month and a half or so, but he's got a plus six ERA the last month and a half. His 2 0 is downstairs ball three, and when it's not right, 
this is what it looks like. He's all over and a lot of times has a hard time finding it. Yeah, you know, one of the things I've seen a little wrinkle in his legs are doing a little bit different in the stretch, kind of a little bit of a pivot. Four pitch walk, time on reaches. Game one of the division series here in Baltimore between two teams that lost more than 100 games two years ago. Two teams that have not been to the postseason since 2016. And it has been a good one. Tightly contested in the first game. Joe Davis, John Smoltz, Ken Rosenthal, and Adley Rutschman at the plate. Well, the last two relievers for the Rangers have tested the patience of <laughs> the coaching staff. We talked about scores came in and threw seven straight balls, and now Chapman has thrown five straight at the top of the order and dangerously getting into the strength. Finds his own there. Now, Spores was able to figure it out after he went seven straight balls, went one, two, three to get out of that inning. Can Chapman find it? Sometimes all you need is that first strike. You never go into the game hoping to throw a strike, but when you miss five times in a row, then you start going, I better pound a strike here. In the dirt, kicks away. There goes Hayes, and the tie run is in scoring position. Almost an impossible pitch to block. In other words, this one bounces so far in front of home plate, he gets his chest to it, but the spin and the velocity take it left of his ability to go get it and throw him out. So. Tying run at second. Nobody out eighth inning. Adley Rutschman takes ball three. Face of the Orioles before he even got to Baltimore. From the time he was drafted, first overall in 2019, he was the face of hope. He was the face of the future for Baltimore. Now he's the face of their rebirth and at the plate with a game on the line. He's aboard with the game on the line. Back to back walks from Chapman. The Ranger fans are saying, no, 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 no. We're not doing this again. Come too far to give the free passes. And that's exactly what they've done the last couple innings. They got out of it, but now they haven't gotten this man out. And you see the 48 comeback wins. That's incredible. Tied for the most in the big leagues. And this guy you're talking about, Johnny, is Anthony Santander, who has singled, walked, and homer. Tie and run at second. Go ahead, run at first. Strike one. Whoa. Now, I know these teams don't run a lot, but Chapman takes a long time to deliver the ball. And if he falls out of favor of keeping them close to second base, it's something to watch. 0-1 pitch. Chopper left side. Young picks it, goes to second one, and turns a double play. Wow. Josh Young, who grew up idolizing Brooks Robinson, just looked a little bit like the legend over there at third. That is a wow, and maybe when this series is all said and done, the difference maker if Texas goes on to win. This is a short hop, tough play, head down, and if he makes the play, obviously the, the double play is in order, and that's exactly what he does. And now, two outs. Talked about the Orioles, how good they are with two outs. Pressure on Heim, ball in the dirt, runner on third. Mountcastle, strike one. The defense for the Rangers, the thing not talked about enough. Yes, they've led the league in every offensive category. Yes, the starting pitching has found it lately. But the defense throughout the year, one of the best in baseball. No bigger moment for it than right there. Tie and run at third, two gone in the eighth. Mountcastle takes in the dirt. RBI double back in the fourth. On this 1 1, Mountcastle takes low for ball two. Now, Anderson on deck. And a hitter in this situation, you want to deliver, but you can't get too big for the moment and expand the zone. This is an aggressive hitter in Mountcastle. So far, so good. He stayed in his mode where he hasn't expanded the zone and helped out Chapman. The 2 1. 
Two and two on Ryan Mountcastle, who embodied hope in Baltimore before they drafted Rutschman. Back when he was drafted in the first round in 2015, Spotlight finds him in Baltimore's return to the postseason. Is off third. Chapman to the plate. Mountcastle swings and misses at the high fastball. And Aronis Chapman, who's been here before, finds his way out of the jam with some help from his defense. Rangers stay in front three to two. But there is the player of the game in more ways than one. His home run is the difference in this game, and then the defensive play that he made to start a double play to help Rodas Chapman get out of that inning. Josh Young. Tyler Wells stays in. This is upstairs to Marcus Simeon. Top of the order for the Rangers, looking for some insurance here. Orioles in the bottom of the ninth have Henderson, Hicks, and Frazier coming up. Play against LeClerc. Somehow able to get out of that eighth inning with the lead intact. Yeah, it's a strange game in many ways. You get five plus walks. Baltimore wasn't able to do much with them, had some rallies going. The Rangers have struck out a ton, but they have a one run lead because they've gotten the homers. And he asks, what wins in the postseason? You know, is it bat to ball? Is it power? Is it starting pitch? Yeah, it's a little bit of all of that, but statistically, recent years, you hit home runs, you're going to win in the postseason. Last five years, you out homer your opponent, you win 85% of the time. And so far this postseason, 5 0 oh, when you hit more home runs than the other team. 2 2. Got it. One gone in the ninth. Today, that home run margin is tied at one. It's 14 strikeouts. Mm. Overcoming that, overcoming that with a home run and a few more extra base hits. So, you know, Perez with the hair flowing. That looks like something out of an ad. <laughs> hair whipping in the wind. Going to replace Tyler Wells. And the Eagles traveling west to take on the Rams. Check for the game in your area tomorrow on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Now one of the reasons the Orioles felt good coming into this series was the left handed pitching that they have coming out of that bullpen with guys like Seeger to neutralize from the left side for the Rangers and CNL Perez, one of those guys. Fastball sinker slider. And they'll be trying to tame Seeger. We talked about it. Seeger. He hits three, over 300, almost category. Left handed, yeah. right handed, home, away, wrist, ahead, first pitch. And he got that swinging the other way base hit to, for his only hit. But you know he's going to factor. If they're going to go deep, it's because he's done some big things in big moments. And what he did in the wild card round has the Rangers dreaming about a repeat of his 2020 postseason. He led the Dodgers to the World Series. Eight home runs, 20 driven in in that postseason run, one LCS MVP, one World Series MVP. And as has been said nine billion times, that was, of course, in Arlington. Now, there's so one for Perez, takes low, one and one. Yeah, in Arlington, which you know the fans of the Rangers know if they win at least one of these two games, they're guaranteed those two games mm -hmm. in their home ballpark, which hasn't seen playoff baseball of their team. Right. Now, but we talk about how good this environment is here, and it has lived up to the billing. We're expecting the same in Texas on Tuesday. Been just as long for the Rangers. 2016, the last time they were in the postseason. Seeger on one two takes in the dirt. Speaking of the state of Texas. Houston already with a one to nothing lead Jose Altuve with a leadoff home run against Bailey Ober. 
2 2. Ball three on Seeger. Boy, wouldn't the Rangers love another shot at the Astros? Spoiled their division title hopes. One of their sixth in the last seven years, the Astros. Just low. Seeger takes the walk. His second one today. And now, a quick word from Capital One. We need a clutch hit. Derek Jeter. Hang in there, rookie. 3 2 game, top of the ninth inning. Rangers trying to start the postseason 3 0. Robbie Grossman chops it along third and foul. That is after losing three of four in Seattle, losing four of six over the final week to blow the division. And then having to make that long and quiet, angry cross country flight to St. Pete. It was a much happier flight up here to Baltimore after they took care of business against the Rays. And Bruce Bochy, steadying hand of Bruce Bochy. With that win in the wild card series, Bochy has now won 12 of his last 13 postseason series. Yeah, that, that is mind blowing. And it seemed like every series he won with the teams he had in San Francisco were games like this. I said, how do you do it? I mean, do you just numb to these kind of games with the decisions you have to make, every game being close? And he said he's kind of gotten used to it, of course. This is a totally different atmosphere for him coming back in a different way that the game is kind of played and analytically the information. Oh, two to Grossman oh. is perfect. And Grossman has struck out. Number of uh, times he's got on his back there. Fourth K of the day for Grossman. The Rangers, we talked about how good they are getting on base. We talked about how good they are offensively. When they get four or more walks, they did that 80 times. Think about that. 80 times half of the season. They won 54 of those games. Two gone Garcia. Strike one oh. from Perez. Again, bottom of the ninth inning, Orioles have Henderson, Hicks, and Westberg. Down a run to face Jose LeClerc. The Rangers are the first team in baseball history to make the postseason with more blown saves than successful saves. Yes, Baltimore. There's hope. And the Orioles are saying, we know. We don't need that to know there's hope with all the comeback wins they've had this year. But their most dominant pitcher is dominant again. And that guy right yeah. there, he had lost it early. But he found it late. And they're hoping that stays the same. Because he looks calm, cool, and collected. We'll see. Just a little bit low. Lance Barrett's caught a good game today. I tell people all the time the adrenaline rush that comes out from a closer is unmatched. It's, you just can't even put it into a category and it'll be unmatched on the road in mm. this environment if it stays a one run game. Perez tried to ensure that it does. His one two pitch to the powerful Adolis Garcia is cut on and miss. A scoreless top of the ninth for Perez. Fasten those seatbelts to the bottom of the ninth. Henderson, Hicks, and Frazier coming up against LeClerc. Bottom of the ninth. Gunnar Henderson is going to lead it off with Hicks and Frazier to follow. And Jose LeClerc comes on to try and finish it off for the Rangers. Well, he's got a really, really devastating slider. And the release point is key to it. And the opponent's just seven for 59 in that slider department. So that's that's the unhittable pitch. And what you got to remember is you can't get beat to the short part of the field. Meaning, Gunner's going to go up there trying to pull a ball with a short porch. You've got all that room to center and left center. And we'll see what happens with this tense moment here in the night. Does that mean you're staying away? I would. I would. I would always. I'm always going to be not get beat 
on the pitch inside to a shorter part of the fence when you have left handers coming up. So yes I would try to stay away and throw that slider back foot. First pitch of the ninth is downstairs ball once he's right in line with what the relievers have been doing for the Rangers that is coming in throwing balls at first but Spores and Chapman able to find their way out of jams to keep the Rangers in front. In the right field that's a lead off base hit. Henderson's first hit of the postseason leads off the ninth and the tie and run reaches. I know you're not going to believe this and you're going to think I'm making it up but that's a change up. They have gotten all their hits on change ups. Crazy. It's remarkable how sooner or later if they're going to win this game they got to obviously get a fastball or a slider for a hit but they did it again. They've created pressure and it's now the big hit one swing away. This place would just explode. Winning run at the plate in the form of Aaron Hicks in the dirt for ball one. LeClerc has been hard to run on. He's an exceptional closer when it comes to controlling the running game. He's got a good catcher back there in high. Henderson at first does have some speed and has stolen 10 bags. One oh. Throw down to first, not in time, and it's 2 0 on Hicks. So the Rangers got him right where they want him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, this is what a game. Funny, the Orioles do too. They're trailing late. This is where they've been happy all year. On 2 0, Hicks pulls a rocket foul. There it Hicks released by the Yankees earlier this year picked up by the Orioles who would have thought in what world does that get yeah. you to the first place team to a bigger role and to a rebirth but it has for Aaron Hicks. Tying run at first winning run at the plate. There goes Henderson throw from Heim. He got him. Jonah Heim throws out. Henderson. Best in baseball during the regular season at controlling the running game does it right here. Just a fraction didn't get that perfect jump. He tries to swim move to get outside the tag. Set it up. That catcher can throw. And what a moment. First stolen base attempt of the game and Heim cuts him down. Now Hicks fouls it off and it's three and two. I love the aggressiveness. I know that's the one thing that people will talk about but that's a, was a good situation with the count and with the runner. Texas just executed. They and just with, executed with the team too. This is who the Orioles have been yep. aggressive on the bases all year and strike three on Hicks and just like that. Baltimore's down to its last out. Just one fraction of the jump did not get great. And the throw, good enough, and the tag applied. And the words there from Brandon Hyde would lead you to believe he didn't know he was going to go and didn't love that he did. Yeah, that reaction certainly seemed that way. Adam Frazier last hope for the Orioles career high 13 home runs this season for him is a cue shot to third young who's been the man today ends game one Texas three Baltimore two and this much maligned Rangers bullpen finds a way to get it to the finish line they didn't make it easy but they got it done and wow I mean this is what this buckle up because this is what this series is going to be like we've got two Really hot starters going tomorrow, but Texas, wow, 3 0 now in the postseason. And today they had five relievers follow Andrew Heaney. They had Heaney and Dunning essentially converted starters going the first two parts of the game, but then four relievers from there did not give up a run, even though it seemed like there was traffic just about the whole way. Rangers three, Orioles two, and they've got their two big dogs going the next two games. They got Montgomery game two and Evaldi in game three. 
get you to Houston. Game one of the Twins and Astros series. Adam Amin, A.J. Pruszynski, Adam Wainwright. Take it away, boys.